The sponsor of our show today is CNE Wildlife. CNE Wildlife partnered up with North American Deer Talk. We're incredibly grateful for that. If you get a, a chance or an opportunity, say thank you to them. And the reason is really simple. They have 30 years of commitment to all natural probiotics. This commitment's really a passion for them. And they've established that through university research at Texas Tech. Whether that be their fawn paste, their top score product, their show choice, farm pack, all the various products they have, they really provide a service and a set of products that helps your herd thrive. Give Sadie a call over there at c and and uh, order up some good stuff. We think you'll like it. We know we do. We've been uh, product users for almost 15 years now. Um, we feel it's the best around. So get you some c and wildlife today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. <coughs> Excuse me. What an intro. Welcome back to another episode of North American Deer Talk. This is episode 62. We are humming along here. I, uh, man, I've been, been busy, been doing quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of work out on the farm, um, dealing with the topic of our show today, and that's antler infections. Now, why? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, but, um, and again, you guys know I, I don't run a I don't run a big herd, uh, but it's been it's been keeping me busy. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about antler infections, um, ob you know observational things that that I've made, uh, treating them, that kind of stuff. I want to talk a little bit about winter prep, fall. Um, some weaning, things like that. Hopefully I, 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 I got three topics here, uh, antler infections, weaning and winter prep. I hope I hit them. Uh, sometimes I, I say, I'm going to talk about something and then I forget. Um, anyway, I don't have a ton of time to spend with you today. So this will be a, a little bit shorter episode than, you know, some of the longer interviews, uh, that we do. Um, but anyway, let's touch on some housekeeping. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that, uh, subscribe and follow button. If you are on the podcast, thank you for listening along with us. Uh, make sure you subscribe and, and download these shows. Uh, if you think we do a good job, you want to leave us a review. That's awesome. Helps us get out to the, um, into the podcasting sphere. Easiest way is to follow along on the North American Deer Talk Facebook group. Uh, make sure you check out our our sponsors. You heard the uh, CNE uh, plug from before. I've been kind of going back and forth with Sadie on a couple things. We are um, we're working on um, some more in depth uh, like uh, probiotic protocols. Um, kind of working through the the kind of seasonal transitions and stuff. Um, as I do those here on my farm, uh, we'll come up with, with more content on that. And by the way, speaking of Sadie over there at CNE, a big thank you to her. She decided that, um, that, uh, she was going to renew for a whole nother year on the sponsorship. Uh, we're humbled by that. Uh, thank you so much to her. Uh, it's just greatly appreciated. And, you know, thanks to you guys. I know you've been, uh, you know, calling her and, and ordering up, you know, top score over the summer and make sure you got your, your, um, um, uh, you know, fawn 911 packs and, and fawn paste and all that kind of stuff. You know, if you're, if you're going to be moving since it's kind of time sensitive and, and relevant, um, if you're going to be moving, uh, bucks here, uh, to do your stocking, or if you're going to be, uh, running fawns in the shoot, uh, for weaning and and does uh, for weaning as well and, and getting your AI program going and all that, um, check out the Electromax product. So it comes in 30 gram tube, um, really nice um, uh, products. Got your electrolytes kind of built into that uh, base probiotic that they have. And uh, the animals really seem to react well to it. It's really nice during these stress periods. Uh, and it's something that I've, I've added in, uh, to my protocols when I'm, when I'm handling, 
I never really did that stuff in the in the shoot so much, and um, I like it a bunch. So check out the Electromax product. I think you'll I think you'll like it as well. So on to uh, antler infections. So you know the bucks are are it is what is it September fifth or sixth here today. Um, the bucks are. I don't know, call it uh, 30% of my bucks are shut out and the other guys are just like right around the corner. So for the past, you know, three weeks, um, you know, some of these, it's it's mostly the older bucks, older, huh, non-yearlings, right? Because um, we just, we don't keep a ton of older bucks, but they've been, you know, boogering up a beam or a drop tine and um, while those drop tines are cool, I've been trying to trying to stay away from them as much as I can. Um, and when I say cool, I mean like the nice, beautiful, you know, single match drop handlebar style deer. Uh, but we've getting been getting some bucks. They'll they'll peel a little velvet down off the top of a tine. Uh, they'll, you know, rake a beam back or, you know, whatever it is. And I've just been kind of keeping um, keeping my eye on those deer and you know more often than not you really should especially late season you really should um address those and when i say address i mean handle those animals somehow whether that be uh, in a shoot or or you know sedating them via remote delivery and you know when i when i question and I think this is probably a good way to look at things. When you question like, should I or shouldn't I? The answer almost always should be yes. And and we play this as managers. Um, we 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 play this kind of game, right? Um, because like you don't you don't want to knock down your deer. When I say knock down, I mean sedate, like get your hands on them. You don't want to have to do that uh more than is necessary, uh, because there's always a risk associated with that. Um, but these animals are valuable, right? So, you know, it's our responsibility to take care of them. And um, anyway, so the, the you know, like I, I just had a couple of these. So I've done, I've done pretty much everything. I've stripped and peeled bucks. Um, I have uh, cleaned up infections. I have cut off bucks with infections. And so let's just kind of walk through um you know, what that looks like and, and how you address those things. So generally speaking, uh, here at my place, we're selling, um, call it 85 plus percent of our, our two-year-olds each year, um, to stock on ranches. And, you know, I made that, uh, I kind of made that conscious decision, um, would have been three, three years ago now. Um, and for the most part, it's been pretty good. I would prefer to keep these bucks uh, that I have with my genetics until they're three because they, they as a whole, they tend to take um, enough of a jump from two to three that that cost basis of the increase in size is is offset um, by that extra year of carrying capacity, feed, et cetera. Now, I closed down a, a, a second farm, a grow out a facility that I had where I was just growing out bucks. And it's limited my space. So I, I don't do that anymore. I said, look, I'm just going to keep these two-year-olds. Um, and that, you know, my two-year-olds just like, they're not, they're not bred to be giants. Do we get some big ones? Yes. But like what I'm seeing is my bottom ends right in the 150 range. Um, and then like most of them are like 180s, 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 um, which I'm okay with. Like they're, they're pretty darn pretty 180s. Um, so I'm plenty happy with that at, at two. Um, and those, those bring decent money. We've seen a pretty nice uptick in, in, uh, pricing on a uh, smaller deer this year. I think there's a supply shock. That's a topic for another day back into the, the antler infections. And I'm, I'm sorry, you guys know how I go. I just kind of f float through my mind. So back to the antler infections, um, I don't want to cut two-year-olds that are going to go out the door um, to, 
to stock, right? Otherwise, I, I I end up keeping them until they're three, and you're better off just cutting them then. So, um, how do you make that decision, right? So every deer is going to be um, deer dependent on what that damage to the velvet um, or infection looks like. And, and that's, you know, that's kind of that gray area. The first thing is making the decision to address whatever that animal is. Um, and, and that's the hard part. You know, I've seen deer just get like a little score, like down, a, down a tine on their head. And there's just a little bit of blood and kind of see that, um, you know, little corkscrew piece of velvet hanging off there. Um, that kind of stuff doesn't, uh, concern me so much. When I see, um, when I see a tine and all of the velvet from the point down is, is peeled down, even if it's a couple inches, you know, that's something to be concerned about. Uh, those flies make their way in there. And when we talk about antler infection, generally speaking, we're talking about flies that get in underneath the, the velvet and, uh, lay fly eggs, those fly eggs turn into maggots and there's still a ton of blood flow coming up out of the body into the, um, you know, the velvet, which is encasing the, the antler and those maggots give off toxin straight back down into the, the system and they get a blood infection, um, pretty quick. So, um, it's important that you address that good binoculars are really important. Uh, sp spotting scope if you see any type of fly activity um you you just got to get in there and you, you got to do it quick um it doesn't take but a couple days so sometimes those bucks will peel a little velvet and no big deal right they'll they'll be um they'll be hanging out with their buddies as soon as you see those animals separate themselves from the group and and it's easy with bucks because they pretty much always lay together um, unless you have like a traditional loner, uh, that just doesn't really care, uh, what the other deer do, but like, generally speaking, all those deer are going to do things together. So they lay down together, they chew cud together, they come up and feed, they water all those things. So as soon as you see, um, something that's out of character, uh, for deer at your place or for that specific deer, especially with. Uh, some type of antler damage, it's just worth knocking them down and, and, and inspecting that. So, you know, that's one thing. Uh, obviously drop, drop tines, they can get infected. The other thing that I've seen is a, um, you can see some swelling. So I had a yearling, oh, maybe three, four, four years ago, something like that now, three years ago. Um, nice. Uh, I think he was like a four by five. He was kind of wide. He was, he was a good little deer. Um, and he just, uh, like scratched the inside of his main beam on his, his right side. And I watched him for a couple of days. He seemed fine. And then, um, I came in, I looked at him the night before I came in in the morning and he had some swelling going on in his his, uh, his antler. And when I looked at him, he had this, um, he had this kind of like distinguished, uh, look where like he, he, um, you could tell he was off. He was, he was getting sick. And of course, you know, as you guys know, deer like to hide, um, hide sickness. They're really good at it. And, but that, as soon as I saw that little bit of bubble and that swelling, I was like, no, you got to get down. So I darted him. Um, and, he had a bunch of fluid in there and it's like a clear slash brownish fluid. And of course, all that, um, all that velvet was dying, but that, that fluid was infection. It wasn't, it wasn't pussy and it wasn't maggots. There was no maggots in there. Um, but it, I, I would guess it's like a cellulitis, right? And well, I just, I'm going to write this down cellulitis. I want to tell you guys a story before we, we wrap up, uh, on cellulitis, <clears throat> So anyway, I had to cut them, right? Like I could have peeled them, but like it was still, you know, first of August or something like that. And, you know, you can't strip them and there's no, there's no reason not to. He's a yearling, you're going to keep him again, just cut them off. 
Uh, I did. I treated them real heavy with, uh, you know, some various antibiotics and such. And if you would like to know what those are, you should check with your vet. Uh, I am not a veterinarian, so I'm not, not, uh, throwing out that, that type of stuff, but you know, appropriate amount of antibiotics, uh, fluids, vitamins, all the supportive care that he needs. And he was, he was, uh, he was in rough shape for a couple of days. Uh, you know, he's kind of on that 50, 50, or he just kind of looked really, really rough. And, um, I had, I had to follow up with a, uh, antibiotic treatment via, via remote delivery, uh, which I did. And, and he kind of pulled through, grew into a really, really nice deer the next year. Uh, so I'm glad I, I intervened. So really two types of, of those antler infections, uh, you have your, your maggots and your non maggots, right? Um, so there's, and this just happened recently. So have a buck. He peels a bit of his G4. He did that full thing where he peeled from the tine all the way down. And I kind of watched him. Uh, he separated himself. He was hanging out with another buck who started shedding the ends of his beams and he wasn't ready. This was maybe two weeks ago. And I was like, okay, I got, I'm going to knock him down. So I knock him down and he's got like a little bit of infection on the inside of his beam. He's got a bubble up in his, in his G3, obviously that G4 is stripped down. I was just like, oh man. Um, and I was kind of on the fence whether I wanted to sell him or not. Uh, really, really pretty deer. Uh, and I thought I'm just going to cut them. I'll just keep them. And, um, you know, we, again, we don't run big numbers. So like when you start peeling, uh, you know, two-year-old class bucks out of your, your stocking program, it, it, it hurts the bottom line because you rely on that, that funding. I rely on that funding to feed my deer for the next year and, uh, pick up those associated costs. So it's, it's a, that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough go around. Um, anyway, so I cut them and I, I, while I was doing that, I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do an antler cutting video. So I have that coming for you guys. Um, I just got all the, all the videoing done. Um, again, it's, it's much like our fawn processing video. If you've, if you've seen that, um, you know, as part of your, excuse me, your service solutions membership, um, that's in there. It's like that. I, you know, I, I self film and, um, it's a little nicer than me walking around doing selfies, right. With a, with a camera on, on Instagram. If you've seen any of those, it's, it's, it's more high quality. So I'm working on getting that edited up. Uh, that should be ready to go. And if you're like, Josh, where do I find these videos? Sign up for the Servant solutions membership program. Uh, we're going to continue to build out more content for you. Uh, like our fawn processing protocol, like this antler cutting video, there's a hoof repair video in there. Um, and, and, you know, we go through our watering system, how we set up our handling facility. Um, it's worth the price of admission. So if you want access to that kind of exclusive content, um, that's where you get it. It's just go to the Servant Solutions website, hit that membership button at 60 bucks for the year. Um, we're going to keep working on videos like this as I uh, encounter things on the farm that I find, uh, valuable. So we did that. Uh, anyway, so I checked this buck out, still holding good body condition. I cut his antlers. Um, he looked really, really bad the next day. Um, he looked really bad. I actually, I was, when I went home, I was, I was leaving to, um, uh, to go to the PA, uh, Eastern Fall Classic for the uh, Pennsylvania Deer Farmers Association event that we had uh, two weekends ago, and uh, it was the day. It was the day before that, and I just I said to my wife before I left, I was like, I'm you know I'm ninety ten on that buck. Uh, I'm ninety percent sure he's not going to make it, and so I left. Uh, I came back um, two days, so it was an overnight event. I came back the the following day and. He looked like a new deer. And I was like, whew, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so I was, I was doing chores yesterday and I just saw that same buck 
like laying in front of this blue down hemlock tree. And if it's, if you're on the video watching him, I'm, I'm using my hand to show height, but like if his head is here, when he uh, is usually laying down, his head was just like a little bit lower. I kind of looked at him I was like something's off. So I dumped my feet in my, in my feeder, grab my binocs. I start walking out and he goes to get up and he just, he just piles up and I'm like, Oh my gosh, what is going on? Right. So watch him a little bit more. His front legs aren't working, especially the right front leg. Now I've seen, I've seen antler infections. Once you get the antlers off or you treat the infection, uh, that infection goes down in the body and it manifests itself somewhere. Right. I've seen it go into the back um, hip joint crazy i've heard of uh another farmer on a pretty famous buck uh find an infection that was encapsulated tucked behind the liver ended up killing the deer um i have seen abscesses on the side of the rib cage front legs hoofs crazy stuff right and it it, it appears as um people call it fusobacterium could be truparilla plus right some sort of abscess um it's the body's way of taking that infection kind of getting this is my theory right getting it out of the blood and um the body's reaction or the body creates this stuff called uh, fibrin and it basically like encapsulates infection and it puts it off like in the body where the animal can still live now whether it thrives or not different story can still live so you'll see this like um you'll see this around uh like uh, somebody will shoot a deer in the front shoulder with an arrow and it doesn't kill the deer and somebody will find a, a broadhead after they shoot this deer way later um and you'll see a picture of it they'll cut it open when they're skinning this deer out and you never know there was a broadhead in there and they find that broadhead kind of encapsulated um, that happens with antler infection all the time. So keep, keep that in mind. So anyway, back to this buck that piled up and stumbled. I was like, Oh man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get my hands on this deer now. And I was like heading out to go to a, go to a, uh, a picnic. And I was like, I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to dart this deer and see what's up. So I see what's up was more like, you know, hope and pray that you know he responds to you know antibiotic and fluid treatments and because that's about all he can do right so i dart him get up on him and the dude has a hole square in his chest right on his front of his brisket and the hole is about the size of a quarter now i can only speculate how he got it the timeline doesn't match up to my liking for this uh you know, antler infection theory to pus pocket, if you will, down in the body, because typically it takes longer than two weeks for that to manifest. We've seen that, you know, three weeks, four weeks, even longer. Um, anyway, he's got a freaking hole right in the center of his chest. So I had to go back and get my kit. I had like my basic stuff that I needed, but I didn't have like my normal kit that I, I, keep with me and so i cruise back i get that come back out and you know i try to try to clean that out the best i can um it wasn't it's not an abscess it's a it's a hole could have been an abscess right but it's real th kind of thick hide underneath there um which makes me think like something was going on before that now i gave this deer a a once over when I had him down for antlers and I didn't see anything there. Um, anyway, it could have been underneath and I just, it didn't break yet. Um, so I got that cleaned out the best I could. Um, you know, gave him, gave him his, uh, his treatments and, uh, woke him up and he, uh, you know, he's, he's doing better. He can, he's not walking great, but like 
he's moving around because I see him in different areas of the pen, which means he's able to get to the water, which is important. He's got enough body condition on him that I think he'll last for a while till he can get up and move around. Um, you know, my next concern is, is like, are the other bucks going to pick on him? So I have to keep an eye on him for that. Anyway, um, you know, back to the other, the other things that we do for antler infections. So that buck got clean cut. Um, you know, what do you do if you want to still have a saleable buck? Because they got to have antlers on their head, uh, as stalkers, at least in the fall. Right. So, um, just addressing da a damaged tine or something like that. The key is getting the dead velvet trimmed off and then creating some sort of barrier between the velvet and the antler that's there. Okay. That could be some sort of spray uh, or salve or, you know, something along those lines. I see a lot of guys using the silver spray can the, the, called the Luma Shield. Um, so just make sure you have a scalpel, make sure you trim off whatever is dead there, get that cleaned up. So you just have nice flowing, red, good blood, healthy velvet. Um, and then that'll kind of, you know, it'll bind to the antler and you sp spray your stuff around so the flies can't get in there and, uh, you know, make sure you put some fly spray on your, on your buck there. Um, that's a great way to salvage, salvage a buck, at least the best you can. Um, and then the other way is as you get later into the summer, every deer is going to be a little different, but once you hit that, um, at least up here, call it third week of, uh, August, second, second, third week. Um, and you have a deer that maybe boogered up their antlers really bad, but you still want to salvage them. You can always try um just like banding uh the bases and then you know cutting your velvet around so you separate the bottom of the antler with what's remaining up top and then peel all the velvet off um so you you do their job for them um that's another option anyway antler infections are a pain in the butt so um i i i've been purposefully trying to breed deer with less time so they have less to booger up um this year's not been my year i think i've treated um forty forty percent of the two-year-olds 50 percent, something like that it's been a it's been a bunch it's been a real pain uh lost a big two-year-old lost one of our nicest two-year-olds uh not to an antler infection but to a um infection down on the face and um that possibly could have been from you know an antler infection that just tr traveled down and like lodged itself and the deer looked fine obviously it wasn't fine um anyway this stuff happens and and you know always better to be cautious that kind of thing anyway didn't work out good for me on that that was that was i'm still I'm still thinking about it um not one I wanted to lose. So let's um, uh, let's shift over into weaning real quick. We have, if you're a Servit Solutions member, we have updated our um, vaccine schedule with um, a new weaning protocol, and we've adjusted um, some of the timings and, and doses for fawns. So make sure you check that out. Uh, we've been trying to kick out a couple emails just to to update guys on that. If you want to stay tuned with all that stuff, you can go to the Service Solutions website, sign up for the newsletter. That is free. Um, you can also sign up for that membership program and you can get all those um, additional updates that you may not get through the through the newsletter mailings. Um, that kind of brings us into that, you know, winter prep. I'll be real brief, you know, weaning, AI, um, this is all going to come up on you real quick. So, you know, cedars generally are less than 45 days out. So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, cellulitis. I forgot cellulitis. So I see all these, uh, see all these guys, you know, they're posing their pictures. They're holding these deer and very few of them are wearing gloves. You're like, Josh, we don't want to hear about this crap. 
You don't need gloves. So if you, um, I don't know if you can see, I'm holding my, there's a little tiny scar right there on my thumb. And I, I don't know how many, it's been 2012, 2012. Um, no, this would have been 20, 2010. Anyway, it was a while ago. Um, I had a buck, he boogered up his, boogered up his antlers and I was leaving to go to Texas the next day for a show. Uh, this was at the end of summer. I got the buck down, peeled all the velvet off. It was loaded with maggots. I peeled it all off. Um, and, uh, fly it on to Texas. I leave early the next morning and we get in, we start touring some farms and I feel like this kind of tingling in my hand. What the heck? That tingling keeps going up my arm, going up my arm. We're eating dinner in, uh, I think we were in Fort Worth that night. And it was either Fort Worth or San Antonio. Fort Worth, I think. And so I'm sitting there and it's like, you know, we get there at 8.30 or 9 o'clock or whatever it is. And me and the steak and like, I'm starting to get some pain up my arm and like, not good. And I see my hands kind of swelling a little bit and I lift up my sleeve and the other guys with me are at the table. You can see the, the black running up my, my veins into my body. And, you know, we kind of put it all together. Well, I had, I had got a uh, antler infection, cellulitis. Um, so they dropped me off at the emergency room. This is after a, a nice meal at uh, Del Frisco's. Uh, so I ate a big steak and had a glass of wine and psh, over to the emergency room, they dropped me off and I sat there for a while. And anyway, they gave me a, a, uh, a shot in the butt of something and, um, some antibiotics and some painkillers and sent me home. I bought a, I bought a couple does, uh, the next day, all freaking doped up on pain medicine. Cause my arm was hurting at that point. I was all swelled up, but the moral of the story is, is if at all possible, when you're handling these bucks, especially if they're damaged, um, I didn't know I had a little opening in my skin there and it sent me to the hospital. That stuff will kill you, right? Like you, you don't, you don't want that. Um, so put on gloves. Um, you know, like you don't always have to wear gloves. I, I choose to wear gloves a lot of the times when I'm, I'm handling these velvet bucks because I just, I never know when my hands are going to be all beat up from fixing a water or monkeying on some piece of equipment uh, that, you know, if I'm dealing with any type of infection that gets into my body and, you know, puts me out of commission. I don't want to see any of you guys out of commission. So anyway, wear gloves. Um, we have a, um, we have a great interview coming up here. Um, with a, uh, a gentleman that many of, you know, uh, I have not talked with him before. Uh, so it'll be something new on, on the show and, and hope y'all hope y'all like that again, appreciate the support on the show. Um, you know, the ways that you can help us out, subscribe, like follow so on and so forth. Um, you know, if you're like, Hey, this is, this is, uh, we really appreciate you, you know, doing this and we like the topics. Um, you know, we want to, we want to help support you monetarily head over to service solutions, hit that membership button. You can sign up for a membership there. There's a ton of value on the back end of that. It's not just listen to me app about, uh, deer stuff. So, um, I hope to see everybody soon at, you know, the upcoming, uh, fall and, and winter events. If you need anything from me, holler at me. We'll talk to y'all soon. And as always stay tuned for another episode of North American Deer Talk. <laughs>